What's the haps? I'm Maroko and welcome! Welcome back to Valhalla! I... I'm on Sunday? And I need a new drink! So, I don't have, I don't have enough to, to make a cocktail with, so we're going to do... We're going to serve something a little bit more fancy and some fancy glasses. This is, a uh, This is what you would call a Glen Cairn glass. Um, cool, you can see the reflection of the game in it, that's interesting. Um, that is a Glen Cairn glass. This is uh, the finest sipping glass you can get. It's designed to enhance the aromas of very, very fine spirits, so we're going to drink some kind of fine spirits. I bought a PAX. Uh, I, I, I intended to get something decidedly American while I was there. I was like, I need to pick up a bottle of American stuff. So, I have... this stuff. High West Whiskey American Prairie Bourbon, batch number 16K09. Presumably the 16th and 1st of 2016. I don't know what the rest of it means. It is a blend of straight bourbon whiskies bottled by the High West Distillery in Park City, Utah. 46% alcohol by volume. It is, according to Little Doodad that hangs on it, a blend of 2-year-old, 6-year-old, and 13-year-old straight bourbon whiskey, rated 92 points out of 100 by Tasting Panel magazine. And mostly... Let's just wet the cork just for extra dramatic effect. Mostly this is the most satisfying bottle. I mean, we, we've opened fancy bottles before in Valhalla, but this is one of the most satisfying bottles to open I've ever known, because it sounds like this. Even... Tolkus doesn't like... Tolkus doesn't like alcohol at all. Even he was impressed when I opened this bottle on microphone for him. It's a really good noise, right? I haven't tried this at all yet. The bottle is still full. But we're going to serve it in a very nice glass and we're going to we're going to enjoy it, I think. So pour a dram. Excellent. for a special occasion, and uh, the first Valhalla videos I've done in a long time is a special occasion, sure. I was kind of waiting to save... I was kind of waiting to save um, the bottle for, for this video. But I knew I was going to make it at some point, so here we go. I go, one bottle of high West whiskey. This is what I like about the glass, the fact that you can kind of do this with it. Woo! And then it funnels the aromas upwards. It smells delicious. It really does smell good. I'm not going to be able to give you tasting notes. I'm, like... I'm not a whiskey critic. As much as I would love to be, my palates and tastes are just not that refined. I can't, I can't do that. I can't be like, oh yes, I'm getting notes of caramel and vanilla and cinnamon and gym socks and a little bit of tamakadam. Um, I can't do that. I'm just like, yep, that smells and tastes like whiskey. It's a delicious whiskey. It's good. Mmm. Great. 10 out of 10. Does smell good. Ooh, not super smooth. It's not a smooth one, but uh, I mean it might need some time to open up and certainly that's what swirling it around the glass is for. Like a fine wine, a good spirit does need some time to open up in the glass and if you have any interest in this kind of thing, there is a channel on YouTube you should subscribe to. It is youtube.com forward slash Ralphie stuff. Ralphie spelled R-A-L-F-Y. Ralphie stuff. He is not nearly as big a channel as he deserves to be because he just put out some damn fine content. Uh, just generally about high quality spirits and tasting them. And he will be able to give you actual tasting notes on things. He will be able to tell you, yes, this tastes like this, this tastes like this, this tastes like this, and give you a score at the end of it as to how good it is. And he knows his stuff. He's been drinking spirits a lot longer than I have. He has a much better palate than I have, and he can definitely give you some tasting notes on things. Um, and his general attitude towards drinks uh, towards them reaching their peak is like and something I've taken on board is you should be left for a minute in the glass for every year in the cask in this instance that the kind of the argument there is that the age statement on this is two years and therefore it should reach its peak after two minutes in the glass I think that kind of general rule has to be taken with a pinch of salt and bear in mind that he's also generally drinking scotches so it's like 10 year age statement is typically the the minimum he's likely to come across. There are a few younger scotches out there, but um, the standard offerings by most distilleries is a 10-year-old bottle. Uh, yeah, the American whiskies, yeah, and your rums, and actually most of the drinks other than scotch will be aged a little bit less. And I will still just say, yeah, maybe give it 10-15 minutes to like really 
become great. Just just generally leave it for a while before you drink it. Don't don't down your shots. If you down it as a shot, you'll be like, well, that's a rough risky, and that's not as great as I thought it was. Certainly give it a smell, give it a taste, see what it's like fresh out of the bottle, but it recognize that it's not going to be at its peak fresh out of the bottle. And basically, if you give it 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, however long it needs, depending on how old and how high quality it is, it will open up like a wine. Uh, and there will be more flavors, it will be richer, it will be more delicious. Most most of the most of the decent spirits I have will exhibit those kind of characteristics. Is I found like you pour it you pour it straight out of the bottle and taste it and you're like, hmm, that's okay. That is a that is a decent spirit. I appreciate that. That's good quality. But you leave it like 10, 15, 20 minutes, and then take a sip and you're like, oh, that's really, really nice. There's a bottle. Did I share have I shared this bottle with you? I don't know if I have. I was I wasn't planning to do this, but let's let's share you share things with you. That is literally my drink shelf back there, by the way. I have two- I, I live in a shared house, and I can't just leave bottles around where everybody else can get to them. I have just- they, my drinks collection is, in lieu of storage space, just becoming a pile on the floor, unfortunately. Which is not the glamorous solution I would like it to be, but one day I will have a drink shelf. There we go. That is rum. That is... let me get that in front of the camera. That is St. Lucia Distillers 1931 rum, 4th edition. Specifically 4th edition. They do a different one every single year. This is their 4th edition. The first one was to celebrate their 80th anniversary. This is to celebrate their 83rd anniversary, which is less of an any exotic round number. But... That's rum. It starts out good, but yeah, you give that like quarter of an hour, it becomes beautiful. It is so delicious. There is... A kind of a sweet, almost minty, sharp note at the back there. If you want actual tasting notes, yeah, there's genuinely... Let me not stand that on its side. That's probably a really bad way to stand it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there is kind of there there is kind of a like a, a bright, kind of minty, fresh note coming through. It comes through and it's like, it makes it really interesting. It's a really delicious drink. It's a really good one. Um, I don't know when the fifth edition is out. I bought... When did I buy that? I bought that in December. Because I got it in, I got it as a Christmas present for myself, basically, frankly, if I'm honest. Uh, I got, uh, yeah, I bought it in December, but I know it had been available for a few months before that. So I feel like the 5th edition must be due out in the next few months, and it's quite an expensive bottle, but... It's a very good rum, and I'm intrigued to see what they're going to do now. I mean, part of me would like to kind of maybe hunt down the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd editions as well, but at the same time... I don't know, I'm not the sort of person who drops 50 pounds on a bottle of rum with a with any degree of regularity, and that is how much it is, so... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a 50 pound bottle of rum. Um, but it's a good one. This, however, is a $35 bottle of whiskey, and we shall see how that develops, but uh, we shall play some games and then come back to it towards the end of the video and we see how, see how much better it is. Uh, good evening. Oh, you look bummed, boss. Starting tomorrow, there will be no more corgis in our bar. Why wouldn't I be sad? And uh, maybe because starting tomorrow, there will be no more corgis at the bar? I wonder if the Shiba Appreciation Society might be interested in booking us. Uh, one problem at a time, boss. Wait, I know someone from the Pomeranian Development Institute. One problem at a time. So you've been tense ever since Friday. Are you worried about Gil or something? Trust me, of all my worries, Gil is the least of them. Now put on some music and enjoy the day, won't you? Right. Ah, uh, fine. Clear these out. And pick some things. Every day is night. Some things. I don't think March of the White Knights was one I like. I keep putting it on. Uh, we do want out of orbit's good one. Yep, want that. I do want the snowfall one. That's a fun one. Uh, out of the city, sure. Boom. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Okay, we're going. To hang on, wait. I need. I need to. I need to change mental gears again. Okay. Bartender, we meet again. Oh, Miss Betty. Hello. And Mr. Corgi Lover. Call me Deal. 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 <laughs> I was there. I, rem I remember. I tripped over this conversation last time. It was like, call me Deal. 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 Wipe that satisfied look off your faces, you two. <clears throat> what can I serve you today? 
I don't think I'm ever going to be able to deliver that conversation right, but it's like, I get what they're trying to do, but I can't, like, say it in my head. <laughs> uh, I'll have a beer. No, I'm not the designated driver today, so give me a fringe weaver. All right, coming right up. And a fringe weaver. Ooh, they're going to they're going to test us by making us make multiple things. Wait, that's a big beer, isn't it? One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. I could, it's a free bar. I could just make her a big beer. Yeah, beer. And next, a fringe weaver. Do I have to make them in that order? Because that's just fringe weaver and beer. Am I making this in the wrong order? Also, ooh, nine Karmatrine. Interesting that Deal's looking for... De Deal's looking for the very boozy one. Oh, he didn't really drink too much. Okay, Fringe Weaver. Here you go. Thanks. Thank you. You seem distracted. Is serving so many dogs finally gotten to you? No, well, yeah, but it's not that. My boss's been acting weird since Friday. Weird how? Romantic weird? Drug addict weird? Let's hope nobody finds the body in the fridge weird? Uh, for starters, there's the fact she only told me we were being booked moments before we opened. Plus, she seems completely distracted or lost in her thoughts. Like you. Worse. Oh. She's not being herself, and that makes me wonder if something's going on. Like what? Do you want a human trafficking ring in the basement? No, we don't have a license for that. Oh, well, thinking about it too much is not part of my job. Can I ask you something about your job? Sure. I've always been curious. What does the BTC need in their bartenders? What do you need to study? They train you from scratch, so you don't have to study anything beforehand. What does the training involve? It's a lot of etiquette and regulation work. Most of our time, though, is actually spent in simulations. Simulations? <clears throat> different, scena different scenarios involving different chemical hazards, that sort of thing. They want you to be able to respond to every possible situation that might come up involving our ingredients. I mean, the chances for failure are really slim, but it's better to not take those chances. Hmm, I see. I'll be back with you guys in a bit. I must attend to the other clients. Dogs. That. Oh, sure. They are chasing me, man! Who? The cabbages, man! The goddamn cabbages! They are everywhere! They are out for my rum! You're... Oh, never mind. Can I get you anything to calm down? A big blue fairy would be nice! Okay, then. Dog wants a big blue fairy. <clears throat> blue fairy. I still went to big blue fairy looking for B there, but fortunately they are, they are under the same category, so that works out okay. So one flanagide, two flanagide, and then we top it up with booze. That's why I wouldn't hear. Edged and mixed. Yeah, hey, blue fairy. There you go. Thanks. Very nice of you. Third bark day. What? Oh, something the matter? Nothing I drink can't solve. Not sure about that, but it's hardly my job to preach sobriety. What do you want? Give me a gut punch. Okay. Me bag wants a gut punch. Which is one, two, three, four, five, one flanagide, and let's top it up with some carmatrine, edged and mixed. Boom! Here you go. Thanks! Hey, you ever felt guilty for being born the wrong race? The what now? I, I, I've just been hearing so much about how we're racist. I'm wondering. Are you racist? Not really. Do you feel like other corgis might be? Definitely, I mean. Then why worry? It's not like they're calling you racist. You shouldn't take generalizations personally. You might be right. And you should have seen the cutie I saw yesterday on the way home. She looked like a cat boomer. She was wearing a mini dress and had this prosthetic eye. Hey, I think we know her. <laughs> I thought you were against people using prosthetics. I'm not against cute, though. Besides, I'm not against prosthetics. I'm only against enhancements. I don't see a difference between the two. Alright, let me put it this way. If you lost an arm and replaced it with a mechanical arm that does exactly what the old one did, I'm okay with it. But if you lost your arm and replaced it with a gun-loaded super arm from hell, that's something I'm not okay with. Even worse if you is if you decide to replace your arm because of fashion, or a whim, or decide to get better at some sport. That's completely not cool. That's the difference between a prosthetic and an enhancement. Replacement versus, uh, enhancement. I'm of a similar opinion about Lilim replacing their factory parts for kicks. Do you think that's going to be an easy way of getting better at something? You're in for a bad surprise. Well, I can see why you think that, but what you suggested to... Um, what suggested to you that she, what she had wasn't an enhancement. If she had bad eyesight, wouldn't that count as an enhancement, even if it fixes it? 
How does reparative work fare into your ideologies? They might be enhancements, but they also replace something faulty. Well, uh... Damn it, stop making sense, you piece of scrap. You're weakening my resolve. Having fun? Oh, bartender, that was fast. Eh, uh, seems to be less dogs out today. At least dogs have want a drink. <clears throat> yeah, some of them ate their tickets. Ah, oh, lovely. I'll be the one dealing with that later. Say, what's your take on the whole enhancement discussion, bartender? My mom had a saying. Anyone can make a chandelier out of their asses. Which somehow means your body, your choices. If they're not hurting anyone, I see the point in hating them. See, buddy? Hey, I didn't say I automatically hate anyone who has an enhancement. Me being against something isn't the same as me being against someone. I'm not some 12 year old blindingly hating someone because of something like that. Maybe you should practice what you preach. What does that mean? I fear retaliation, so I'm not saying another word. Are you two gonna order anything? I'm fine right now. No, uh, she's drinking mine, actually. Alright, call if you need anything else. Sure. Let's see. No! So much for avoiding retaliation. You're not gonna believe me! <laughs> he was a... He's called Poop Eater. He was in the... What were you doing in the bathroom, Poop Eater? I hope you weren't doing what I think you were doing, Poop Eater! I, w I was in the bathroom and this other dog was looking at me from the top of the sink! Uh, do you mean the mirror? No, another dog! I see, what can I serve you? You're not gonna do anything about that other dog on the top of the sink? I'm sure he doesn't want to hurt anybody, don't worry. I hope you're right! Well, I want something really sweet. Coming right up. Alright, by flavor sweets, let's give you a moon blast. Sure, that, looks, that sounds pretty sweet. One powder delta, one flagite, and two carmatrine, all on the rocks and blended. Why do I keep accidentally picking the blended drinks? They take longer to make. It's tedious. I gotta wait for this bit. Okay, boom. Moon blast. Here you go. Thanks. Please think about the other thing with the other dog on top of the sink. I will, don't worry. Well then. Hmm, that was quick. Uh, like I said, there aren't too many dogs today. When I had someone booked us for three days, I expected more of an attendance. A while you were gone, this fella said that the Bleeding Jane is better than the pile driver. Please prove him wrong. All I'm saying is that I don't see the point in drinks that feel more like a kick in the mouth than a beverage. What do you think, bartender? Do you think there's any point discussing non-alcoholic drinks in a bar? In my opinion, people who order a bad touch always make me giggle like an idiot, though. That's not an opinion, that's a statement. Oh well, please serve either pile drivers or Bleeding Janes. We'll let you decide which one is better. Coming right up. Pile driver and or Bleeding Jane. Two of any of those. Can I, like, serve one of each? I don't know. Pile, pile drivers. Mm, doesn't burn as hard on the tongue, but you better not have a sore throat when drinking it. Or Bleeding Jane. Uh, spicy cl Yay, let's go with Bleeding Jane, I think. One, two, three. One, two, three. All blended. Is that it? Oh, yeah, it is straight up non-alcoholic. Right. This is the non- Hey, what, what did I do? Bronson Delta. Oh, I put oh I put freaking Karmatrine in there by accident. One, two. And again, I picked the option that needs to be blended, so it takes longer. And then I screwed it up, so it takes even longer. Oh god. Why why would I do this? Okay. Next one. One, two, three. One, two, three. And let's. Whoa! Almost put some booze in there by accident. Whoops! The bottle of vodka fell and landed in your bloody Mary, which is supposed to have vodka in it anyway. So what the hell? Uh, fine. Here you go. Yes. Yeah, take his side, see if I care. How did you two end up discussing that? Well, it started when I told this guy that I wasn't crazy about the idea of working just for corgis. Mind you like corgis, they're cute and fluffy and funny and they... just, like, make you smile. Tell me one interesting thing about them. Legends say they were created by a fairy and that their breed was raised to fight dragons. Which is, maybe explain some of the names we've been seeing. Oh, you have to be kidding. No, no, actually, I heard that one too. Really? Still, I can't see why you're so tired of them. I don't know, maybe because I only ever deal with them at their worst. You've only ever seen them in their happy state. I'm the one I'm the one running feces samples and unclogging their shrinkers if they eat their own as dental floss. I might be their veterinarian, but they treat me more like a mom and not in a good way. It's like being a gynecologist. After a while, you stop seeing bo boobs and vaginas, instead all you see are the issues you must fix. Or at least they're cute issues. Depends, a gynecologist can't pick clients by age or preferences. I was talking about your job. Oh, yeah, that too. Still, I don't... I don't think it's just much... Still, 
I don't think it's so much that I'm tired of them as it is I'm tired of you being obsessed with them. I'm not obsessed, I'm passionate. You sleep with a corgi plushie and have a wall dedicated to photos you've taken at the company. I'm really passionate. Too much passion can become, become an issue, you know. Speaking of issues, did you talk with the directors about the whole cardigan conflict? Well, I was going to do that tomorrow when they're all together. But I still don't know why I should be the one doing it. And for starters, they don't take me too seriously. Understandable, I don't take you seriously either. I mean, in the end, they're still dogs. They need someone with a strong commanding voice. Are you saying I have a naggy voice? No, not your voice, just your entire demeanor. So I have a naggy demeanor? I'm assuming you two are talking about the whole race conflict. Yeah, this is hurting them more than they think. The company might actually collapse at this rate. Which is terrible because a couple of these dogs' families are dependent on their paychecks. Doesn't that count as unethical and unusual treatment of animals? It's a bit of a legal grey area. The dogs doing it willingly, after all. And even if they weren't doing it willingly, the dogs aren't actually being mis mistreated or exploited. In fact, the company's pretty relaxed. Speaking of relaxed, how's Jurgen doing? No, oh, he's fine. Still complaining about his back, still unwilling to take his medicine. Still says he's not that weak. Who's this, uh, who's this Jurgen guy? Oh <clears throat> my guardian? I passed the test years ago, but I couldn't leave him. That's actually commonplace, isn't it? Lillian being unable to leave their guardians because they feel too much like family? Now, to be fair, people get attached to many things, some even getting obsessed with inanimate objects. My grandpa loved his car more than any of his sons. Uh, the one whose will left his earthly possession left all his earthly possessions to his car, right? Yeah, that one. How'd you become a little become a li How'd you become a Lilim's guardian? Uh, you fill a form at the Artificial Intelligence Council. Then they do a background check. If they deem you useful, they'll give you authorization. You're given a week's notice before they give you all the data about the Lilim you'll be taking care of. Uh, you'll have to watch over it until they can pass over three different personality tests. If the Lilim wants to stay with you after that, well, that's your problem. So it's like adoption and the lottery all rolled into one. They do that to diversify the possible outcomes. Two Lilim can be of the same model, but they'll grow differently depending on their guardians. What if something happens to the guardian? A uh, new guardian can appeal to the council, stating they're more fit for the position than the original. This happens when the guardian has become unavailable in some way. Or because you can back up claims of neglect or maltreatment. You spit out all that information like it's hard-coded in you. I worked in that department for some time before coming to the SDC. It's almost real. It's almost a reflex. Are you interested in becoming a guardian, bartender? I don't know, I'm just a nerd when it comes to AIs in general. The money they gave you for it is not that great, though. Ah, I see. Well, time to check on the dogs. Listen here, punk! Sorry, I didn't mean to call you a punk, it's just... I was chasing my tail and now I'm too hyper to control myself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just give me anything. Alright. Dog wants anything. I wonder if it's safe to give him something sweet. Uh, he said anything. Fine, you can have a... I don't know. I thought it was a bland... Was there not a bland section? There used to be a bland section. I'm sure there used to be a bland section. Um, I want to give you a frothy water. One, two, three, four. It's kind of like a Zen star, but crap. Boom. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that's better. Thanks, punk. No, see, I can see the value of other dog races. Like Pomeranians, those are nice, but they aren't corgis. Well, yeah, I can understand that. What do you mean, I remember that cute girl from yesterday I mentioned earlier? Uh, yeah? The white knight that was with her, she wasn't half bad either. I mean, it was obvious that a tapestry of muscles was hidden under her armor. It was more di if we, uh, yes, she had a white knight with her. Yes, I think we definitely know who you're talking about in this instance. Yes, okay. I prefer more delicate looking girls, though. You can appreciate how something looks, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily your thing. And you, bartender. Me, what? Which dog race do you prefer? That's not the question I was expecting. Uh, I'm not much of a dog person, actually. Do you have any pets? I had a cat named Four, yeah. He's just a stray I rescued. You like rescuing girls, too? I'm sure I should be making a witty retort right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say no. Weird, I've always thought that rescue fantasy was universal. Uh, why call it Four? Four is a Lilim I met some time ago that... Never mind. Pretty, ne pretty lame name, if you ask me. Better than calling it Asshat. I bet when you and four play, it's quite the sight, eh? Eh. Uh, 
He's so lively, sometimes I fear foreshadows my presence entirely. You guys want to lose consciousness that much? You really need to calm down with the whole pun-hating stuff, Betty. But to move away from this whole foreground... <laughs> ah, what was this rescue fancy you mentioned before? Also, I recognize I've got, I've got this out sat here. This has been sat here about long enough, hasn't it? This is probably quite good now. I was kind of got a little bit of me wanted to wait till the end of the video, but I can't. I'm, I don't know how long the day is, and I might be here a little while longer, so I should probably, like, we should probably sample this thing. Ooh, look. It's delicious, and it has opened up, probably. 